Hi guys, my name is Davis and welcome back to my channel. Recently we've been unboxing a lot of retro phones. We've unboxed the Palm Trio 650 from 2005, we've unboxed the original Palm Pre from 2009, and we've also unboxed the HP Pre 3 from 2011. So what's next? Well, it's time to think big, think small, and think beyond because we are going to be unboxing what many consider to be the biggest failure in HP and tablet history the HP touchpad, the tablet that was famously discontinued after just 49 days after launch and then flogged for $99 during the fire sale. And if you enjoy tech videos like this one, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also be sure to comment any HP touchpad memories that you might have because this is the 10th anniversary. I'd love to hear from you guys. So. The HP touchpad, where do we begin with this one? So after HP bought Palm in April 2010, the rumor mill was awash with fabulous ideas because for the first time in forever, Palm finally had the money and the backing to make phones that didn't wobble like this. I mean, seriously, how was this acceptable? <laughs> People were saying that HP was going to put WebOS, Palm's breakthrough operating system, on laptops, on printers, on phones bigger than 3.1 inches in size, and even toasters, yep, toasters. But the most exciting rumor was the Palm Pad, the tablet that could rival Apple's recently launched iPad. And this was a segment where HP needed Palm's help desperately because their first attempt at an iPad rival was the HP Slate, which was awful. Not only was it large, bulky and ugly, but with netbook internals and Windows 7, it was also slow and horrible to use. Palm's WebOS on the other hand was seemingly perfect for tablets, not least because its gesture-based interface was actually designed with touchscreens in mind, but its card-based multitasking and scalable UI was powerful and flexible in a way that neither iOS on the iPad or Android 2.3 gingerbread could even dream of rivaling. After teasing the Think Big, Think Small, Think Beyond WebOS event for February 2011, expectations were running high and the event actually largely lived up to them. While not as mind-blowing as Palm's 2009 CES event where they unveiled the original Pre, the two phones that both eventuated, the Pre 3 and the Veer, both looked great. And the touchpad, which is this, was everything that the public had dreamt of. Unfortunately though, the touchpad didn't launch in February, nor did it launch in March. It didn't even launch in April, rather it launched in July, four months after the far slimmer and far more established iPad 2 sucked the air from the room. So it might have been okay if the touchpad was a polished product, but that wasn't exactly the case. Not only was the initial WebOS 3.0 release extremely buggy, but general performance of the hardware was fairly mixed coupled with the mediocre hardware, high price, and lack of apps, it wasn't exactly a surprise that they didn't shift many units. And HP's new CEO at the time, Leo Apotheca, without the vision of Mark Hurd, unfortunately discontinued the touchpad after just 49 days on sale. After that, they had a fire sale for $99, and very briefly, the HP touchpad was actually the second most popular tablet in the world. <laughs> So now let's get unboxing, shall we? So I've got this massive box from eBay. Let's see what it contains. Okay, let's have a look. It's, oh my God, this is the touchpad. So to make things clear, this was my old touchpad from 2011. This is the one that I got on launch day. And this is a brand new one that's never been opened before. Let's see what else is in the box. I've also got the original HP touchpad case. Now, I didn't have the best experience with this case, but maybe this one will be a bit nicer than the one I used in the past. And then very finally, I've got the Touchstone charging dock over here. Incredible, where do we start? Let's start with the um, touchpad, shall we? Okay, so this is the HP touchpad box. And initially, we can see that it's covered in this sort of plastic that we can remove like so. Let's look at that. Oh, isn't that lovely? So underneath the plastic is actually a really nice feeling box. It feels high quality, it's, um, it's quite sturdy, and um, it's quite attractive, I would say. 
So we've got this lovely picture of the HP touchpad on the front. It says HP touchpad over here. On the sides, we've got this lovely contrasting black color. And on the back, we've just got a little bit of text. It says designed by HP in California, which is um, a bit of a progression from the old Palm. Um, designed by Palm in, what was it, Sunnyvale. <laughs> and um, over here we can see that it's recyclable and it's got Bluetooth, how very interesting. And then over here it says what the box contains and it contains the HP touchpad device which is definitely something that's good to hear. It contains a cleaning cloth which is also very exciting. <laughs> We've got the um, AC charger, micro USB cable, getting started guide and navigational guide. But most exciting of all, it's got Beats Audio. Now, currently, Apple um, owns Beats. So why on earth is Beats on an HP device? Well, at the time, this was before Apple bought Beats and also before HTC had Beats. So at the time, Beats had a partnership with HP and the Beats logo appeared on basically every single HP device there was. On the touchpad, they claimed to have um, tuned the DAC and also the speakers. And um, they weren't amazing, but they were okay. So now let's get to opening the box. We've got this tape over here. So let's cut through that. I don't have a knife, so I'll just use um, these car keys. <laughs> it's not very effective. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> um, I might just pick it with my fingers. That's very attractive. There we go, so we've finally undone the tape. So now let's finally unbox the HP touchpad. And it slides out like so. <gasps> How cool is that? That is actually one of the coolest unboxings ever. So um, we've got this lovely sleeve over here and underneath we've got this contrasting black box. Let's take the tablet out. How beautiful is that? So we've got this little tab over here. Let's open that. Oh my God. So despite what a lot of people said about the hardware at the time, the black glossy plastic on the back and um, the black screen bezel on the front actually creates quite a beautiful effect. It looks quite similar to the um, original Palm Pre actually in a lot of ways. So on the top of the device, we've got the power button over here. We've got the headphone jack over here. That's tuned by Beats. We've got the volume um, buttons over here. Over here is actually it's um, on some devices, it's the, um, it's the SIM card slot, but over here, it's actually, it says your serial number over there. <laughs> that's, a nice, that's a nice little Easter egg. So you just um, push it in and it comes out. And on the bottom, we've got the micro USB port over here, which is actually a little bit difficult to use, but that's fine because this is wireless charging. And then on this side, we've got dual stereo speakers tuned by Beats. And um, on the front, we've got a 1.3 megapixel camera. And down here, we've got the home button with the light bar um, as well. Let's see if it turns on. It doesn't, it's completely dead. So this is the first time that we've had an unboxing where the battery's completely dead. And this includes the, um, the 16 year old Trio 650. So that's actually pretty disappointing. So I'm just going to switch over to um, my working touchpad over here. So inside the touchpad, uh, as you can see, it's quite, it's relatively quick. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. That's actually from Qualcomm. It's the Snapdragon Scorpion. I've actually overclocked this one to 1.9 gigahertz, hence the blazing speed. For example, let me just impress you guys. I've got, um, I'm going to open tap note. Three, two, one. So as we can see, it's not the slowest thing in the world, but it's not exactly fast. Also in here is one gigabyte of RAM. So as you can see, I've got plenty of apps open and I can still switch between them quite easily. 
it's still pretty snappy. The multitasking is pretty okay. Also in here is 32 gigabytes of storage. There was a 16 gigabyte version for $100 less. And then also a very rare 64 gigabyte version that they actually didn't release, but some managed to leak out. Um, the screen is actually pretty funny because it's a 9.7 inch um, display with 1024 by 768 pixels. And this was basically an identical screen to the iPad 1 and iPad 2. And rumor has it that HP actually used all of the reject iPad screens um, on the touchpad. So the ones that didn't pass muster, they would use on the touchpad. So the touchpad weighs 740 grams. And while this is pretty heavy, it does give this plastic device a certain level of quality, despite that it is heavier than the 12.9 inch iPad. So um, that really puts things into perspective. And um, it's also, as you can tell, quite thick. It's 13.7 millimeters, which makes it one of the thickest tablets you can buy. But because of the curved shape, it's actually pretty comfortable to hold. So now that we've taken a quick tour of the device, let's see what else is in the box, shall we? So underneath here, now comes the fun part. I wonder if they are telling the truth here, or if it's a bit tongue in cheek. So this comes out. Oh, it opens like that. Oh, how cool is that? This is actually the wallpaper of the touchpad. Let's see. Yeah, so as you can see, this is the wallpaper. That's the default wallpaper. And they've got that in the box. So that's very cool. Um, we've got the um, getting starter guide, which um, folds out just like the old Palm phones. So that's pretty cool. So over here, it just tells you basically how to use the UI, how to open your apps, gestures, and most interestingly over here, hardware connections. So it tells you that you can connect to the touchstone charger. It can also connect to a WebOS smartphone and then you can sort of um, share your messages and use touch to share. You can use the keyboard, which is the, this is the official one. And you can also attach it, of course, to an HP printer. And that's the getting started, guys. Over here is the navigation guide. So over here, you have more gestures. This is the actual gesture guide. So that's quite similar to the WebOS phones. And finally, this is my favorite one. HP is here to help. Well, only for 49 days, because um, obviously they did discontinue the device. Under there is the limited warranty and um, the legal information and the fun bit, the actual fun bit, the microfiber cloth. Let's see if there's any branding on this. Oh yes. As you can see there, it says HP on the cloth. Now that's a sign of quality. Okay, so now let's see what else is in the box. This one has a USB cable and a Thunderbolt on it. So I wonder what it contains. So inside we've got the USB cable. As we can see, this is a micro USB cable and um, it's got the traditional palm little dome over here. And it's also got a little rubber um, loop to help you organize a cable. And also in here is the power brick. As you can see, it's in a similar style to the traditional palm power brick, but it is a little bit larger and it's got no palm branding over here. Yes, instead of replacing the palm branding with HP, they just decided to go with nothing. Um, fun fact, I believe there was a little bit of a comparison between power bricks at the time and this HP one came on top. So um, that is truly very fascinating, I am sure. And that basically is the unboxing of the HP touchpad. Now let's get to the accessories. Which one shall we do first? Let's do the case, shall we? So this is the HP touchpad case. Um, on the back, um, it says case in a variety of languages. Over here, it says protect your HP touchpad with this lightweight case that doubles as a stand for watching videos or typing. Charge the device in the case with an AC charger or using the ch touchstone charging dock. So yes, you can keep your case on while charging wirelessly if you really want. On the bottom, we've got pictures of the different positions. So let's open it up and see. So it appears to slide out in the same way that the um, tablet slid out sideways like so. 
and we are invited to a plain black box. And yep, there's another piece of tape on the top, so let's undo that. There we go, and let's open it. And it slides out like that, and it's in another piece of plastic. Let's just open it up like so. And, oh yes, this is a familiar feeling. Um, firstly, first impressions, it's incredibly bulky. It just, it's very fat in my hand. And um, it's a bit of a, it sort of feels like the material that the iPhone silicon cases are made of. Um, which is totally fine for a case, but just not quite as nice as leather. Um, inside, we have got warranty, obviously. It's recyclable, apparently. And we've got a instruction manual. <laughs> Why does the case need an instruction manual? I have no idea, but um, it's there if you need it. Okay, so inside the case, we've got the HP touchpad dummy. Let's replace it with the real thing, shall we? And... Uh, okay, it's a bit difficult to get in. Squeeze it in. And then, yeah, look at that. It doesn't have a magnet like an iPad case, so it'll just swing open. But it says HP down here, which is um, a nice touch. It keeps all of your corners protected. Let's see if we can stand it up. So there's a little flap under here. I totally forgot about this. There's a little flap under here that you bring up. It's got Velcro and, okay. So you can sit your touchpad like that. <laughs> it's so bad. Or you could have it like that and type away. I mean, I think it's relatively sturdy, but obviously it's not the best case in the world. And then yes, you do have your speakers exposed at the top like so, they're not covered, which is brilliant. And the buttons feel they feel okay, you can still press them. Let's see if it still works on the touchstone. Yes, it's still charging. Let's unbox the touchstone now, shall we? Okay, so rumor has it that the next iPad is going to finally have wireless charging. Well, what if I told you that the HP touchpad had wireless charging 10 years ago? And it's used this thing called the touchstone. So you might be familiar with the um, Palm Pre Touchstone, which is this one. You basically put your phone on it and it charges. The touchpads one works in a similar way, but it's larger and for a touchpad, obviously. I actually like how consistent all of this packaging is. You've got this consistent white sleeve on the outside with this black box that slides out from the inside. And um, obviously it's closed, just like the, um, the cases one. Oh yeah, on the back of it, it says, HP touchpad charging dock, charge your touchpad without wires getting in the way. Just place the device on the dock and it begins charging. You can also adjust the, um, the angle. Okay. So it's opening. So it comes with another power brick. So now you can have multiples. And over here is the charging dock. Oh my God, it's actually, it feels really good. This is a really good quality hinge. I let's pull the plastic. That was quite surprisingly difficult to do. And it's also got some more plastic on the back. Fantastic, so as we can see, it says HP on the back and it can actually flex quite a bit. It's got rubberized um, feet on the bottom and the cable is just supposed to hang out on the side, I guess. So let's say you've got your touchpad and um, you can sit it in the normal spot or you could have it landscape, I guess. 
and you can also adjust the tilt. So just say you didn't have the keyboard, you can still, um, you can still type away and you can also use it like so. So the ideal setup, I guess, is that you've got your keyboard over here. This is the official HP touchpad keyboard. It looks okay, but um, it doesn't have the best feedback. So you can just have your keyboard over here. You have your touchpad touchstone over here. And then when you get home at the end of the day, you can just sit your tablet like so. And then you've got like a mini workstation. How cool is that? It's sort of like the iPad magic keyboard case. Um, you can just have your iPad and use it as a tablet throughout the day and then sit back at your desk during the evenings. <laughs> but another cool thing with the touchstone is that you can use something called exhibition mode. So just say that you finish using your touchpad for the day, you've completed all your emails or whatever you do. You just press the power button and then it goes into a sort of a screensaver mode. For example, you can have the time or you can choose from a variety of other applications. Most of them don't work anymore, but you can have photos. Let's see what photo will come up with. <laughs> so that's a selfie that I took um, probably a few years ago. And then it'll just play a slideshow of all of your favorite photos. <laughs> <laughs> Next photo. <laughs> okay, so you can have a slideshow of all of your favorite photos. In this case, it's some screenshots of WebOS Nation that I took 10 years ago. <laughs> and it will just go through them like so. <laughs> wow, this is how the Facebook app used to look like before it broke. And that's a screenshot I took of the lock screen. See, fabulous photos here. What you also have is um, the weather. I don't think this works anymore. So let's forget about the weather. Um, we've got multi-clocks. What does that do? It's the absolute worst um, sand, what do you call it? Hourglass timer that you could imagine. What else do we have? We've got Halloween artist. Okay, so it seems like, um, okay, so you can have Halloween artist, which is um, the time, but on a pumpkin, which is perfect for all times of the year, I'm sure. Um, we've got Governor, which is the app that you use to overclock the device. I'm not sure why you want to use this as a screensaver, but the option is there. And Project Morecore, that was sort of the coolest um, Twitter app on the touchpad at the time but I doubt it works anymore. <laughs> this is how the Twitter app looked like. Oh, also another very fun thing with the touchpad was, if you are a big um, Angry Birds fan, if you have the touchstone upside down like so, with the speak grills on the top, instead of throwing your apps away off the top of the screen like that, you can slingshot them with the Angry Birds sound effect. How cool is that? <laughs> okay, and that brings me to the end of the touchpad unboxing video. So we've unboxed the HP touchpad with the case and also the touchstone wireless charging dock. And now I'm probably just going to put them back in the box because um, I've, as you can see here, I've already got a touchpad. <laughs> Comment if you'd like to see a more in-depth video about the touchpad, perhaps a tour of my daily driver touchpad from back in the day. Like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And also links to all of my socials and my new websites are below. But until next time, toodaloo.